It's been 100 days since Nolan Arbaugh, the first patient to receive Neuralink's N1 telepathy chip, not only recovered remarkably well, but also performed many tasks and actions at a higher level than initially. However, a new incident occurred with Nolan Arbaugh, which Elon Musk and the company have confirmed. While the issue seems to have been resolved, Nolan Arbaugh has just shared his progress and her experience so that future patients are not too confused with Neuralink, especially regarding the upcoming blindside implantation for the second patient. So, why is Neuralink becoming a miracle in the real world? And I can only imagine where this is going to go. Um, and y'all are really doing just the coolest thing in the world. Like, I'm so happy to be a part of it. Briefly talking about the first patient, in January, Neuralink implanted this device in a 29-year-old patient named Nolan Arbaugh to research and test its safety. The guy was a quadriplegic through an accident from driving. Just weeks after the implant, the company reported a good recovery, even live streaming when Arbaugh used BCI in March through playing chess just by thinking. It would not be an exaggeration to say that thanks to Neuralink, the first patient is actually living a second life. Before participating in Neuralink's prime study, Arbaugh used a tablet stylus to interact with digital devices. A caregiver would place the stylus into Arbaugh's mouth so he could use it, hence the name mouse stick. He would have to sit upright to operate a tablet using the mouse stick. The cons of using mouse sticks were that they led to discomfort, muscle fatigue, and pressure sores. The mouse stick also affected Arbaugh's speech. Everything was tied up too much, making it impossible for the patient to feel comfortable for a long time. But that soon changed since 1,024 electrodes distributed over 64 fibers were successfully implanted into Arbaugh's brain. As confirmed and announced by the company and the media, in the weeks since his surgery, Nolan has used the N1 chip to control his laptop from various positions, including while lying down in bed. He plays online computer games like chess, civilization with his friends, browses the internet, live streams, and uses other applications on his MacBook, all by controlling a cursor with his hand. Crazier, he has even used the link to play Mario Kart on the Nintendo Switch, something he had not been able to do since his spinal cord injury. On weekdays, Nolan contributes to research sessions for up to eight hours a day to test the health and further develop new capabilities of the Neuralink chip. On weekends, Nolan often spends more than 10 hours a day for entertainment. Recently, he used the device for a total of 69 hours in one week, 35 hours for structured workout sessions, and another 34 hours for personal use. Participation in research sessions allows us to evaluate the performance of the link. The standard measure for speed and accuracy of cursor control in bits per second BPS calculated using a grid task as you can see in this video. Higher BPS values indicate better cursor control. During his first ever research session, Nolan had set a new world record for human BCI cursor control of 4.6 BPS. He subsequently achieved 8.0 BPS and is currently trying to beat scores of the Neuralink engineers using a mouse with the hope of hitting approximately 10 BPS. The link is able to distinguish left and right clicks and allow cursor control sufficiently precise to select targets similar in size to the smallest icons and buttons you'd see on a laptop. The ability to select small targets using multiple click types allows Nolan to use applications and play games on his laptop that were not possible with his mouth stick. But it seemed like the chip would operate smoothly for decades before starting to degrade, but Neuralink apparently didn't let us in on the secret that a small problem occurred 100 days after implantation. So, what happened to Neuralink? There's no denying that Neuralink has been Elon's most criticized venture, with many ethical and feasibility concerns. However, after the successful telepathy demonstration with Nolan Arbaugh, much of the negative perception has been dispelled, and a significant portion of the public is gradually shifting towards supporting Neuralink more. However, to fully convince everyone to trust, it's not certainly the simplest task especially when the company is still in its early stages, facing significant hurdles along the way, which are widely discussed. According to a recent report from the Wall Street Journal, it seems that Musk and the company may have only disclosed those issues to the public due to the intervention of some authoritative agency, indicating that Neuralink might have indeed intended to conceal this mishap. But everything seems to have been brought to light. The public has yet to be informed about an issue that led Neuralink to even consider removing the implanted device altogether. The issue here is that some fibers out of the total 64 fibers of the implanted device placed in Arbaugh's brain became dislodged, leading to a loss of connectivity data. 
Reiterating about Neuralink's electrodes, they are implanted into the patient's brain and contain 1,024 electrodes across 64 fibers or thin film materials. These fibers are thinner than a hair and essentially capable of transmitting signals to the brain's neural network. Although this mishap didn't affect Harbaugh's recovery process or his health, and he was never in danger because of it, it did lead to a reduction in bits per second, or the speed and accuracy at which Harbaugh could control a computer with his brain. This means that the response time to control a computer mouse slowed down because of the total number of signals the device collected from the brain was interrupted. In its separate report on the successful 100-day milestone post-implantation, Neuralink didn't dwell too much on the details, merely mentioning this incident in passing, such as not specifically disclosing how many fibers got damaged. All we know is encapsulated in a concise four-sentence paragraph. Specifically, Neuralink wrote in its post, In the weeks following the surgery, a number of fibers retracted from the brain, resulting in a net decrease in the number of effective electrodes. This led to a reduction in BPS. In response to this change, we modified the recording algorithm to be more sensitive to neural population signals, improved the techniques to translate these signals into cursor movements, and enhanced the user interface. These refinements produced a rapid and sustained improvement in BPS that has now superseded Nolan's initial performance. According to the Wall Street Journal's report, Neuralink is researching this issue in the hopes of preventing it from occurring in future implant devices. It's believed that the fibers were retracted due to pneumocephalus, a condition where air becomes trapped inside Arba's skull following his implant surgery, causing some fibers to disconnect. Meanwhile, many are alarmed because similar incidents with Utah RA chip implants have occurred in the BCI field before, posing life-threatening risks. In fact, right from the early days post-implantation, Nolan Arbaugh also hinted at potential side effects with Neuralink. He mentioned in a video playing chess just by thinking, it's not perfect, I would say we've run into some issues. However, he also candidly admitted, there's a lot of work to be done, but it's already changed my life, I feel like it's going to change the world. This incident has sparked considerable debate about the safety of Neuralink, with the most concerning aspect being its potential direct impact on the psyche of the next patient slated to use the Neuralink Gen 2 Blindsight product. Once again, it's evident that things have been shaken up significantly by this minor mishap, even though Neuralink's first implantation to date could be considered a successful endeavor. However, given the company's history of alleged information suppression, including reports of the deaths of some animals implanted with Neuralink, the company still needs to provide full disclosure to the media if it wants to avoid increasing skepticism about BCI technology. It's crucial that both the positive and negative aspects are transparently disclosed. On the other hand, we must also be fair to say that Neuralink's first human implant is still a success to be considered a revolution. We need to know that every application in the world initially had errors with gradual improvements. Neuralink is no exception. Although there was a small problem compared to the initial time, the company team immediately resolved it completely and even upgraded it to a higher level. On the other hand, we believe that this is even a good thing because this incident was detected early to increase precautions for the next Neuralink patients. The problem will be more serious when many patients receive the N1 chip without detecting this risk. So it can be said that in incidents, there are always valuable lessons. Analyzing the activity timeline of the first patient using Neuralink BCI like Nolan is particularly important for gaining insight into how this technology impacts daily life and advances into the BCI field. The special attention of the medical team at Neuralink to Nolan's activities, along with a meticulously recording of every detail of his time and activities with Neuralink, it's a clear expression of care and ensuring patient safety. This careful monitoring not only provides peace of mind for Nolan, but also for all individuals who come into contact with and use this technology in the future. What can we expect from Blindsight Neuralink? After completing the first implant surgery, dubbed telepathy, Elon Musk confirmed that the second patient would be implanted with a device named Blindsight. True to its name, Blindsight promises to restore or enhance vision, a remarkable breakthrough in the medical field that we've discussed in previous episodes. Elon Musk particularly emphasized the more impressive ability of restoring vision of individuals blind from birth. While it may seem like a distant dream, with Blindsight, it becomes a reality. The preliminary understanding of the method suggests that the chip will be implanted into the brain with primarily electrode fibers penetrating into the rear of the brain, the area crucial for processing visual images and information. Blindsight may help restore or replace lost nerve cells of this area, or through transmitting images from cameras like GoPro into the brain, allowing patients to see everything around them. Although details about Blindsight haven't been clearly disclosed, it's evidently still a significant step further, as Musk candidly admits. Resolution will be low at first, like early Nintendo graphics, but ultimately may exceed normal human vision. 
Despite being a distant success, the release of this vision restoration device has brought millions of hopes to those blind from birth or who've lost vision due to accidents. The emergence of blindsight is not only a significant advancement in BCI technology, but also a testament to the power of Elon's innovation and commitment, along with that of Neuralink, in overcoming life's greatest challenges. Neuralink's current work is focused on pushing cursor control performance to the same level as that of able-bodied individuals, and on expanding functionality to include text entry. In the future, the company intends to extend the Link's functionality to the physical world to enable control of robotic arms, wheelchairs, and other technologies that may help increase the independence for people living with quadriplegia. In preparation for the treatment of the second patient with a vision restoration product Blindsight later this year, the team of experts and physicians at the company still feels a shortage. A recent announcement from Neuralink has made the situation more intriguing as they're seeking a fully qualified neurosurgeon to join the resident innovation member of the Neurological Innovation Society at the company, with a residency requirement in Austin, Texas. This position not only demands deep expertise in neurosurgery, but also requires flexibility and willingness to collaborate with technical teams. The doctor will work alongside top experts in the field to conduct brain-machine interface testing procedures, utilizing both human cadavers and large animals. Their responsibilities also include evaluating and improving techniques for the new developments of the surgical robot R1 as well as surgical procedures. Equally important, the neurosurgeon will also ensure the ethical and humane use of animals, collaborating closely with veterinary anesthesiologists and veterinary technicians. Additionally, they'll be involved in evaluating technical designs and providing feedback on the usability and safety of new technologies. In the context of Neuralink's rapid growth and numerous vacancies in Austin, Texas and Fremont, California, the recruitment process becomes more crucial than ever. The company needs the best talents to ensure the success of its products and projects in the future. Choosing a suitable neurosurgeon is a major decision that requires very careful consideration. Neuralink announced an update to their patient registry in late March, expanding access to Canada. According to the brain-computer interface startup, this is the first step in their plan to expand the patient registry to other countries worldwide. Neuralink noted that anyone in Canada and the U.S. who's at least 18 years old can register, and the company prioritizes selecting cases of quadriplegia, paraplegia, visual impairment, hearing impairment, speech impairment, or major limb amputation, affecting upper or lower arms or upper or lower leg for enrollment in the prime study. It's important to note that Neuralink also emphasized that participants in the prime study can withdraw their consent at any time. According to the latest updates on Neuralink's website, this breakthrough technology is bringing hope to hundreds of thousands of people worldwide who suffer from quadriplegia. It's estimated that in the U.S. alone, there are up to 180,000 individuals living with this debilitating condition, and each year, this number increases by an additional 18,000 new cases due to spinal cord injuries. Neuralink, aiming to connect the human brain to computers, promises to restore motor function for quadriplegic patients. By implanting chips into the brain, they can control electronic devices through thought, replacing damaged body parts. However, with the field of BCI becoming increasingly prominent, competition is also becoming more noteworthy. Synchron, a competitor to Elon's Neuralink brain implant startup, is preparing to recruit patients for a large-scale clinical trial necessary to seek commercial approval for its device. Like Neuralink, Synchron also plans to deploy an online registration mechanism for patients interested in participating in the trial, which includes dozens of participants and has garnered interest from around 120 clinical trial centers to aid in the research. Synchron seems to be making strides in the testing of their brain implant device compared to Neuralink, which is commendable. Synchron also received approval from the United States for preliminary testing in July 2021 and has implanted its device in six patients. The company reported that previous trials on four patients in Australia showed no serious adverse effects. Therefore, while its competitors is improving, Neuralink should also focus on optimizing its product. The development of Neuralink has ushered in a new era in the field of BCI, bringing hope and optimism to those who have permanently lost their motor abilities. However, this technology is still in the research and testing phase, requiring more time for refinement and widespread real-world application. However, the statistics on the discoveries and new capabilities in the first patient show the enormous potential of Neuralink in improving the quality of life for quadriplegic patients. This is a clear testament to the power of science and technology, and serves as a reminder of the importance of investing in research and development of advanced technologies contributing to human welfare. Typically, this type of study enrolls 5 to 10 patients and lasts up to a year. The next step is a feasibility study and then a pivotal study 
which is somewhat similar to a phase 3 study for a drug. If all goes well, it will likely take between 5 years and 10 years before commercialization. Neuralink has a long way to go to test safety and effectiveness to qualify for approval by the US FDA to commercialize its technology. If you feel positive about Neuralink and appreciate its development, please comment success. If you have doubts about the risks or side effects of the chip, please share your opinion so we can conduct a survey on the trustworthiness of Neuralink. We value any contributions you might make. We hope you'll have the most relaxing feelings after watching this video. If you did, please hit the like button and join the Tesla Car World family by subscribing to our channel. And don't miss any of our awesome videos by hitting that bell icon. We certainly value your feedback and your time. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon. Until then, stay safe, have fun, and God bless. Bye.